What does warn error mean in Jenkins? Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.387.3. I've also predefined a job on this controller. Now, before we take a look at that job, let's go and look at the documentation for warn error. The link to this documentation is down in the description. What warn error does is it catches an error and sets the build and stage results to unstable. In a previous video, I talked about what is unstable. If you're not really sure what unstable is, I recommend that you go and watch that video. Now, in the case of warn error, it executes the body, which we'll take a look at in a few moments. And if an exception is thrown, it sets the overall build result and the stage result both to unstable. This is the equivalent of using catch error with the message and explicitly setting the build result and the stage result to unstable. So effectively, warn error is just a helper function for catch error. So let's go and take a look at our job and understand how this is going to work in our case. So if we go back over to the job. I have a job named warn error. If we take a look at the actual configuration of the job, what we have is a single stage with a step doing sh false. Now, if we go ahead and run this job, what we'll see is that the job will start up. And then once it runs the false step, it will automatically fail. So as it gets into the step, we run false, we get an error and a finished of failure. If we take a look at the stage view for this, we can see here that we have a red section here and also the red X indicating a failure. So how do we add the correct syntax for warn error? Well, let's go back into our job. We'll click on configure. We'll scroll back down to the bottom and I'm going to go ahead and click on pipeline syntax. We'll select the sample step. We'll scroll down to warn error. And let's look at the options that we have. We have the option of setting a message, which in our case, we're just gonna say not a real failure. Let's just assume that when we run false, that's really not a real hard failure to us. Real examples of this might be maybe you're making a call out to a third party service and you get back an error code from that, that you've then wrapped to give you a status of either a one or a two, anything but a zero. That might be a hard failure for you, but also it might also be considered a soft failure for you. So this is up to you of how do you want to define an error to whether it's a hard failure or just unstable. So now that we've defined the message, we're gonna tab out that takes care of the message warning. And we also see that the catch pipeline interruptions box is checked. Well, by default, this is always true. Therefore, that's why we see the checked. If for some reason, we didn't want to catch those exceptions. We could uncheck this and our output would be different. But in our case, we do want to go ahead and catch it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on generate pipeline script. And what we see here is warn error. And then we're going to be wrapping whatever it is that we're going to be doing. In our case, it's going to be the SH step. So let's go ahead and copy this, go back over to our job. I'm going to go inside of steps and paste in my warn error. We'll clean this up a little bit. And then let's go ahead and grab our SH faults and put it inside of our warn error block. So in this case, what we're going to expect when we do this is when the SH faults executes, the warn error is going to catch that and then reclassify that failure as an unstable. So let's see if that's what really happens or not. So we'll click on save and click on build now. When we take a look at the output of job run two, what we see here is we see our faults just like we did in job run one, but then we see the message that we just created, not a real failure. And then we see that we finished with an unstable. If we go back up to our stage view, instead of it being red and also notice over here beside the number two, we now see yellows and also an exclamation point instead of an X. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.